Welcome to today's 3D print. Let's have a chat about the ANA E12. Stay tuned. Alright, ANA E12. Um, it works. I don't know if I suggest, suggest buying it. Um, it has almost all the same quality control issues as the ANET E10, which is kind of a pity because it wants to be a good printer. Um, I had some issues to work through. Uh, first of all, I built it, assembled it, printed it right away. Not much of a problem. I did have some trouble getting the filament to go in. I'll get back to that later. Uh, these are just some of the prints that I made from it. You know, it prints fine. It's okay. Not as good as the E10, but I'll get more into that. Um, one of the very first things I did was replace the shroud with the E10 shroud from CNC Kitchen. Works perfectly. Makes a huge improvement right away in the printer. The the stock shroud is just no good. Um, that gets into that. So got rid of that. And I also got rid of this, the hot end. Um, I kept having a problem with the motor skipping. Every time I would run the print, I would have to slow it down because the motor would start skipping the extruder motor and it turns out that there was something binding up inside of this hot end because when I decided to try switching plastics to see if that was the issue um, I couldn't get the plastic out <laughs> it just it wouldn't come out I, no matter how much of a push or pull I did no matter how hot I got it so something in here was binding it was actually grabbing a hold of the plastic and keeping me from removing it and I actually think I did fix it so far. What I did is I put a CR10 hot end on there and it worked fine. Now here's the interesting thing. This actually has an all metal hot end. I didn't know that. So there is a heat break tube, a threaded tube inside of here. Um, don't think that means you're going with high temperatures because there's not much of a connection between the heat break tube and the heat sink. Unlike the CR10 heat break, which is threaded into the heat sink, this just slides loosely into the heat sink and there's a set screw that holds it in place, which means the thermal transfer from the heat sink to the um, heat break is not that great, most likely. Um, more than enough, obviously, for this kind of printing, but um, probably not enough for higher temperature stuff. So the way it works is the Bowden tube only comes in this far. Okay, so the Bowden tube stops here. On the CR10, the Bowden tube goes all the way into the nozzle. It goes all the way down into the hot end. Um, just about to the nozzle, just above the nozzle. Well, this one stops right there. So it stops right above that first fin on the heat sink. I suspect the problem was that the alignment between the heat break tube, and you're not going to see this, I'll take a picture and add it to the end of the video so you can see that. Um, it's weird. It's almost like a slotted screwdriver hole opening in there, and it's like a cone shape, and then this sits on top of it and mates to it. And I believe when these two were going together, they were not aligning precisely, so that was creating a little kink inside here, and I believe that was the resistance from the filament pushing through, because when I change hot ends, no more stepper um, skipping on the extruder motor. Um, I believe that's also why I couldn't get filament out. I believe that kink was just enough that it would grab the slightly expanded filament from the molten hot end and it would hook onto it and so you couldn't pull the filament out. Uh, the only way to change it was to actually remove this, push new filament in, push the filament down inside there and then screw it back together. Now what I ended up doing was taking a, you know, a, a little pair of needle nose pliers, I stuck them in that hole and I just turned it a little bit. I believe the metal wasn't cleanly cut so there was a little bit of flashing um, kind of like when you thread a hole and there's a little bit of metal left in the threads I believe that's the case there was some flashing left on there I call that flashing um, and I think that's what was grabbing because now that I've cleaned it up and put it back together again and secured it now I can insert filament no problem but you can still feel it right there so yeah exactly right there at the interface between the compression fitting and the Bowden tube and the all metal hot end there's resistance you can feel it grab where it doesn't want to go in I have to turn this a little bit and then it goes in so the hot end's a little sloppy I'm not sure what to do about that 
it could be as simple as um, making that opening a tiny bit bigger and then using like cavern corn tubing in here not because of the higher temperature of the tubing but because the tubing is made to a higher tolerance so if you'll notice on your printer there's a whole tremendous amount of play inside this Bowden tube and there's almost no play in the hot end itself and I believe that difference in ability for the filament to move left and right yeah see in here there's very very little play in the hot end it's a pretty good fit um, but it's enough that if this hole is offset from that hole if their filament in here is expanded and there is a tiny bit of playroom in here it's not a perfect fit so this filament will be able to expand larger than it is now and that filament is going to grab onto the edge of that Bowden tube when you go to pull it out. And I believe that's where the problem is stemming from. I believe it's fixable, but for me it was easier just to replace the hot end. They're almost identical. They're, they bolt right together. I just had to cut away a little bit of the plastic on the CNC kitchen trout. Since um, the CR10 um, heat sink is just a hair longer, a hair lengthwise longer. But I just replaced it problem solved. I'll eventually put quiet fans on here. But then I ran into the problem I was expecting to run into. I mean, the prints are fine. I'm either, although I do have a small amount of what I would call salmon skin. I'm not entirely sure why. But prints came out fine. Benchies and Marlins. Marvins. The Christmas tree came out fine. This is a Shun plastic transparent red. Very cool. It's got like an orange pink shimmer to it. I like this plastic a lot. Very nicely wrapped on the tube, on the roll too. They, they, there, there is no tangles or kinks in that roll. It's very nice. More on that in a separate video. Uh, my last print failed and I finally gave up, took the printer out of service because the same problem that I estimated would be a problem on the E10, but the E10 kind of eked past it, became a problem on this one and I can't get past it. Um, by the way, this heat bed heats up faster than the CR10 heat bed and to a higher temperature. I'm not sure why. It still has trouble getting past about 80. Um, I think I hit 82 or 83, but it gets there a lot faster. It gets to 70 quickly, probably in about half the time of CR10. I'm not sure how they do that. When I take this box apart, I want to see if it's 12 volt or 24 volt. But um, for whatever reason, that heat bed is more effective, and I'm not sure why. The problem with this bed... The reason I can't use the printer anymore is because the Y carriage is warped. And it continues to warp as I use it. It is now warped to the point where I can no longer level the printer. The, the delta between the left side and the right side, the difference in um, warp from left to right of the Y carriage is greater than the full travel of the leveling knobs meaning I cannot lower or raise left or right side high enough to account for the bed difference. So let's say this is your Y carriage and this is your bed and your Y carriage is bent like this. Well that means this side of the bed over here, the right side, has to be lowered to compensate for that. Well, it's warped so much that I can't lower the bed enough. I fully bottom out the springs and this side is still too high. And the difference is starting to creep front to back. And it's because they use the same three-piece thin metal H-brace that they use on the E10. So your Y carriage plate, what to me is arguably one of the most important parts of the printer, is thin, prone to warping, and three pieces. It's not a solid piece of metal. If you look on the bottom of your CR10 or something like that, it's a solid aluminum plate or steel plate. And it has holes in it for your wheels or slides, and it has holes in it for your leveling. Um, this one is three pieces. You have the left arc, the right arc, and then the center cross brace. So it looks kind of like an H. That's why I call it an H brace. On this one here, you're not going to be able to see this on the camera. I doubt it. Maybe you can. That might be enough for you to see it. I don't know if you can see it, but the plate is warping here. So the plate now has an arc in it. If you look at these bearing blocks here, this bearing block is actually rotated clockwise because the plate is warping. And that is shifting the bed level outside of the bounds of the adjustment of the bed level screws. So obviously this glass plate makes the bed flat, but I can't tram it. I can't get the 
the nozzle, I can level it on this side above the print bed, but I cannot lower this side enough to allow the nozzle not to touch. The reason I was able to get away with it before I changed this plate was that it was thin enough. And as long as it was thin enough, you were able to adjust it enough to match. But with even a thin piece of glass, I got the any cubic ultra base on here. Um, it's not enough. It doesn't. You can't tram it. Um, so I'm going to have to disassemble this, take this plate off, and see if I can get somebody to make me a replacement plate for this. I'm going to see if one of the CR10 sized plates is large enough um, to act as that. I'm not sure if that would work. The I would at minimum need the four um, corners to line up so that I can bolt them together and then drill holes for the bearing blocks for the smooth rods because obviously the alignment of those parts is critical. If they don't line up, it's not going to work. Um, you'll have binding when it tries to move. But I will see about that because this printer is usable. It, it does have decent quality. It does print nice. Um, this, um, where's my, oh, well, you're going to see it in another video. I don't want to spoil it in this video, but um, I did a, a gigantic upscale of a print, and it was an 85-hour print done on the A9 A12, and it did fine. No problem. But the quality control, it drives me crazy. The, um, basically, everything you see in my E10 video and everything you see in my unbox video of this is present on this printer. So if you get one of these, I don't suggest it, unless um, you can get it really cheap. Uh, oh, by the way, I did finally figure out how to tighten this damn thing up. <laughs> this is the, first of all, it's an off-center triangle, so you're never going to fully get it tight. They still didn't fix that. This is the exact same um, components as on the E10. But the trick is to take a relatively thick rod, that one's too thick, so next size down, Okay, you take one of your the second thickest Allen key. What you do is you loosen this. You put a wrench on here and a screwdriver in here, and you loosen this up, and then you push it up, and you'll see a gap form. It's a, it's a slot that that wheel can slide in. But how do you tighten it while also compressing it to make it tight? You stick an Allen key right into the slot, and you jam that in there. And now, when you push up on the wheel, you can push up on the Allen key and push that wheel all the way up in the slot. And now you can tighten it without a problem. Worked great. The first try. As soon as I figured that out, I got it done the first try. So that's how you tighten up the <laughs> the head on this printer, nice and snug now. Um, otherwise, it worked great. So I've got to work on getting a replacement wide carriage plate, and I'll be able to put this printer back into service. That's it for now. You guys have a great day.